Hello, and welcome back to another Traker video, where today we will be testing out this crane thing I made. First, I have to complete the construction, because in the last video I didn't complete the construction of the crane. Completing the construction involves attaching the struts, which I found out can only be attached with the stock EVA construction. So here I am attaching the struts using the stock EVA construction. Which is a bit funny looking because if you look at the engineer's hand you'll see he's holding the tool from Kerbal Inventory System and the tool that comes with the stock EVA construction. So I attach a, strut, a few struts to make it more rigid. There we go, a strut will go there. I briefly forgot that I couldn't use the Kerbal Inventory system for it. But anyway, I have finished attaching the struts. Time to drive the crane thing back to where I was building it. Now I noticed on the way back that it was a bit unstable, it kept trying to tip over. So I decided to try and attach some like passive stabilizers to it. That might help stabilize it in motion. Anyway, with that done it's time to go to the launch pad to actually test it by building a rocket and trying to lift it. Now I put the passive stabilizers well I didn't put them too low, it was because of the Kerbal. The Kerbal adds extra friction when they have not ragdolled. Once they've ragdolled it can move as fast as it wants. It's a weird physics thing with Kerbal, where it's harder to move a Kerbal that isn't ragdolled. Anyway, here we are at the launch pad with a rocket we need to assemble. And I'm going to use the two spare fuel tanks as a ballast weight for the crane. Is it called a ballast? I think it might be called a counterweight, now I think about it. Anyway, here we are getting the rocket ready for construction, moving things out the way as I prepare to build the rocket. Now this time I will be building the rocket on its side, as that will be easier for the Kerbals to reach on the ground. And this will allow me to test the crane. So I do my usual thing where I put the tanks in stacks of three. And then attach them together. I also attach the rocket engine to the rocket. I move some of these things out of the way to attach the next tank. And then I attach the decoupler for the second stage. And then the structural tube which the engine goes in. And then I attach the second stage fuel tank. I then attach the decoupler for the capsule. And then I attach the capsule. There we go, capsule attached. And then I get an atta a connector. So I can connect the winch to the connector. So I extend the winch. And I get the winch and attach it to the connector. And then I try retracting it when I notice it's tipping the crane a bit and it's 
having trouble lifting it. So I get the two counterweight tanks and attach them to the other side of the crane. So I try retracting the winch a bit and you can see it nearly tips the crane up. So I have to... So I'm at this point I'm realizing that maybe this design wasn't such a good design because it's very easy to tip this design as I am learning here. So I noticed it was struggling to lift the rocket up so I get a curve to help push the rocket up. And then as the curve lifts the rocket up, I then get the winch to start retracting, which ended in disaster when the crane fully tipped over. At this point I also learned that I build I built the crane too short because the crane was supposed to be tall enough to accommodate taller rockets than my standard orbital rocket, which is the one that is currently that it was trying to lift, and it's the same height as it. So I will have to make the crane taller. I will probably end up complete completely redesigning the crane. Maybe go for maybe more of a bridge crane design because I can imagine that would be more stable for lifting rockets. It will just be a lot bigger and require a lot more trusses and it will probably be an entire vehicle on its own rather than being on top of the truck thing. So I have an idea to lift the crane back upright and this idea involves attaching the rocket engine from the rocket to the crane and then using it to lift the rocket up. This idea works better than I expected it to as you can see. But now the rocket engine is at the top of the crane and it would be quite hard to get it down. I'm also going to attach... I also want to attach the rocket engine to the back of the crane to help keep the crane upright when lifting. As I said, I will be redesigning it in the future. And then as I rove it over here, disaster strikes. And it falls over on top of the plane. This one is a bit more of a tricky one to deal with. As there is no rocket engine to lift it up. So what I do is I get an engineer Kerbal. I get Jebediah Kerman and an engineer. Might be two engineers now I think about it. I leave the crane on its side. I think there I'm just wondering what I'm going to do. I'm like doing nothing because I'm, I'm in disbelief of what happened. But honestly it was to be expected that it would tip over. So I get Jebediah to board the plane because I'm going to use the plane to transport the new rocket engine over to the plane. I mean the crane. So I get the plane and get the two engineer Kerbals to hold on to the side. So off we go to get the new rocket engine for the crane. 
and this new rocket engine will be attached to the opposite side of the crane to be like a counterweight that produces thrust. Not the best design in the world, it's more of a bodge. Anyway, um, so I attach the rocket engine to the top of the plane to transport it over. Now I go a bit slower with the plane because that's a lot of extra weight for the landing gear to carry and the fixed landing gear in Kerbal, especially the especially the not the nose one but the main landing gear is weaker they like to explode with any sort of strong shock especially if there's a lot of weight on them so I be sure to go a bit slower so I go towards the crane with the new rocket engine and tank and I realise that it's not going to be very easy to lift the crane up at this angle because before with a rocket engine there are two thing there are two trusses touching the ground which meant it could pivot around two points but currently there's only one truss touching the ground which means if I used the rocket engine it would be far less stable and more likely to tip in another direction so I decide to build more trusses onto it to make it to make it so that it's touching the ground at three points rather than two points or even one point I mean and that should make it much more stable for lifting it back upright. So you can see I'm attaching the third truss so it can pivot around three points rather than two. And then I go and get the rocket engine. But I realise I'm going to need something to attach the rocket engine to. and I'm going to have to lift up the crane slightly so that I can attach the rocket engine without it being in the ground so I get this truss to lift up the crane slightly so I can attach the rocket engine however this truss ends up flipping it back upright without the need of the rocket engine. So I go and do what I intended to do before and attach the rocket engine to where the counterweight thing would be. Here we go. And now we Now we attach the rocket engine and off we go. And then I noticed that the new stabilizers are actually stopping it from moving. So I raise them up a bit. This allows me to start moving. So we go over to the launch pad towards the rocket that is currently on its side.
Here we go. Now it was a bit of a pain to try and line up the crane because the crane kept sliding. Especially once I added those two fuel tanks as a counterweight. So I detached them and tried moving it back. That, but it kept sliding around which made it very difficult. But I managed in the end by, and how I managed it is I basically just lowered those stabilizers again. And then it started sliding really weird because of wheel physics. So, in the end I used those stabilizers and I attach them lower than the wheels so that it's resting on the trusses rather than the wheels so it doesn't slide. I attach the connector to the winch, or the winch to the connector. I then attach the counterweight. And then I start lifting using the thrust from the rocket engine as a counterweight. And this actually works. I manage to lift the rocket upright using the thrust of a rocket engine to keep it stable. As you can see this is a very very poor design because the crane is far from tall enough to lift the rocket fully upright. So I had to sort of move the crane around to sort of drag the rocket to its final position. And I was lucky it didn't tip it over again, to be honest, because it is in a very unstable configuration right here. And in the end, I figure the rocket is upright enough that I can just detach the connector. You can see it's not perfectly upright, but it's upright enough that I can just detach the connector and move away. There we go, detached the connector. And now we can move the crane away from the rocket. Then I attach the fins to the rocket, now it's upright. And in the process, I take off the connector and put it on the crane, or I just put it in the Kerbal's inventory. And that allows me to reuse the connector for future use with a different crane, because honestly, this crane is terrible. I will be using a different crane for future rockets for sure as this is a terrible design like even if I made it taller I would just make it more unstable so I go and bring the Kerbals back to the to the area next to the plane where they all hang on to the side of the ladder. I go a bit slower this time as I don't want to tip it over again. And in fact I don't even drive it onto the KSC. Anyway, this is the end so if you didn't enjoy the video remember to dislike and unsubscribe and maybe you won't watch the next video. I'll launch this rocket in the next video.